So uh, today we are here at City Mochari. The purpose of our being here is uh, to perform, perform smarter, which is an examination of uh, some body parts which were recovered in an area called Tuare. So what we did today uh, was including, uh, including doing uh, X-ray on uh, the bodies which are there. So that we can uh, be able to get more information about these bodies. Upon finishing the x-rays, we perform uh, autopsies. Uh, we perform uh, examination on the contents of three body parts, uh, two of which we completed the examination and one will continue later. Uh, the one we did the uh, examination on were pieces of uh, upper part of the body. Uh, so those are one uh, upper part of the body which contain the head, the chest, and the upper limbs and the trunk, the of a female. Upon further examination, we found that uh, this female had uh, injury to the head. There was a bruise on the left side of the scalp with bleeding in the brain. We took samples for DNA because uh, we still don't know who this person is, even though there are some persons who came and uh, identified her as uh, their kin. Then after that, we proceeded to the next body bag, which had a lower part of uh, a female body, dressed in a blue panty, uh, which was flowered and torn, and it also had some blood stains. We took some swabs uh, from, the, from the part for DNA also, and also for identification. There are no injuries which you saw on the lower part, apart from uh, uh, the, the, the truncation of the body at the, the spine uh, area which is called uh, lumbar area uh, which is the lower abdomen whereby the person cuts through uh, the, the spine the other body i think we're going to because of time we could not uh, start interrogating it we are going to start the we do the exercise uh, on wednesday because tomorrow we want to indicate it for uh, performing of x-ray of all those uh, remaining uh, body parts which are in body bags so that is all yes all right uh, so far has it has he managed or rather can you tell so far the cause of death cause that which you have expected yeah as i said uh, that upper part of the body we saw that it had head injury it's like uh, she was hit by a blunt object on the left side which uh, caused a lot of bleeding in the brain the lower part, uh, we suspect that this lower part belongs to the same person because uh, when you look at the complexion, when you look at the area of the spine which uh, had been cut through, it, we, we can reconcile it to be up of the same person. But we, we don't to be so sure until we confirm through DNA which we have taken. Yes. All right. So are, are we ex expecting to have this exercise continuing for the rest of the week? This exercise will continue until we finish all the body bags because there are several body bags which are brought here. So we want to continue until we finish all of them. So that now we can be able to tell how many people were really involved and what are to their cause of death, all of them, yes. Yeah. Seeing as how the bodies were mutilated, are there any similarities between these bodies and the Lillian Waini case? Um, for, case? For Lillian Waini, um, I don't know, unless I go back to my notes and have a look here, yeah? so I cannot uh, be able to tell whether there's similarity. But uh, remember, we, 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 they were, the, 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 the legs were separate, each was uh, separate, and the trunk was also uh, separate. But this one, it's like this person was cutting, the one I've seen, because I've seen only one body, it, it, it was cut on the, on the lower abdomen, through the spine. Yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So I think uh, we, we were here with the, th throughout the process, we had the human rights representative who were there throughout in the autopsy room. They were looking at each and everything that we were doing. And I think it would be good for them also to talk about what they saw and what they think also. So I'll, I'm going to wel welcome uh, Madam uh, Wangeshi from IMLU to talk, th then uh, Irongo will talk also. So yeah, we first want to begin by appreciating the cooperation we have had today we had a multisectoral team uh, led by, of course, uh, Dr. Johansen Otuor and um, uh, different players uh, that led uh, the processes that took place today. We do want to acknowledge that uh, civil society, specifically human rights entities, were represented to witness and observe the proceedings of the day. 
and uh, I think that's a very good collaboration moving forward. Uh, we want to just affirm to the Kenyan public that we are watching, that we are keeping brief, that um, we are uh, witnessing the process. We just want to urge that uh, now that uh, we have witnessed the process, it's going to take a bit of time. They're doing their very best to you know, make it a very thorough process. We have um, our entities have uh, our pathologists who are supporting the process as well. And so we just want to ask for a bit of patience as this process is brought to a logical conclusion. We do know that Kenyans want closure and justice. And because of that, we are appealing for two things. One, kindly let us preserve the evidence as much as possible. So our, our, our call is do not interfere with the evidence in whichever way. Uh, we really would want that process to be fruitful in terms of pursuing justice, but also in terms of giving closure to the families. So I would want Irongo to add uh, if there's anything I've left out, Irongo, yes. So Irongo Houghton, Amnesty International Executive Director. I think we have to recognize that this is a horrific um, moment uh, for many uh, Kenyans. We have seen really just some tragedy um, of a mass crime proportion. So I think just to also echo what um, Wangeshi has just said is that it is really important that we treat the dump site, the quarry dump site, as a crime scene and that it is not disturbed in a manner in which we are not able to recover uh, any other bodies that may be there, but also to give enough uh, evidence for the homicide team to be able to identify what may have happened and also what is the pattern um, that connects these different crimes. As we know, the uh, Director of Criminal Investigations have uh, arrested a suspect. Um, until this process is complete, uh, we will not know whether all of the uh, bodies that we have seen um, or that have been delivered to the city mortuary come from uh, this suspect um, and, uh, and others. So I think we have to, as I think has been said, be patient, um, be thorough. Um, we are committed, both the Independent Medical U Legal Unit, Haki Africa, um, Shield for Justice and Amnesty International to independently continue to monitor what is happening here so that we can uh, clearly say that the truth has been uh, found once the postmortems are complete. I think as Amnesty International, we would call on the um, speed of the investigation that has gone into this particular case to be also um, expedited in the case of Rex Masai, in the case of the young 12-year-old Kennedy Onyango, in the case of um, all the people that um, have been uh, uh, killed in the context of the protests over the last three to four weeks. We would want to see their cases also be expedited so that we have the people who have killed them um, essentially prosecuted and brought before a court of law. That also will uh, restore the sense of uh, uh, justice uh, that uh, Kenyans want to see in the course of what has happened in the 40 cases um, that we have seen over the protests. And talk of preservation of evidence, we've seen that the teams uh, retrieving the bodies are mainly locals. Are there, is there help from government agencies and probably how trained are they in terms of handling and preserving the evidence? I mean, the, the, there has been a lot of cooperation from the community. Of course, Quarry has been a very tense place for the last three to four days, and uh, I think the disbanding of the um, uh, police station has been important in terms of restoring the confidence and the trust of the local community. I think it, it is also very important to recognize that many young people have come forward to support the Directorate of Criminal Investigations to um, essentially retrieve the bodies. But there is a way in which it, is, it can be done that actually does not help the investigations. So I think we have to treat the dump site as a mass crime scene and therefore um, not have bodies being retrieved without the presence of the Director of Criminal Investigations because in many ways there is no way that we will be able to tell if body bags are just simply being brought to the city mortuary that there is, um, uh, there is evidence that, is actually, that they are coming from quarry. So my appeal to all the human rights defenders and, and particularly those that have been working under the auspices of the Mokoro Social Justice Center who have been so courageous and so valiant. Um, the gentleman that was helping to retrieve the bodies from the, um, uh, the water mass, I think it's important to say, please do not bring more bodies without notifying the, the Director of Criminal Investigations. If there is a sense of concern, uh, 
reach out to Amnesty International, reach out to IMLU, reach out to uh, Haki Africa, and we can help to accompany that process so that the bodies that are brought or the body parts that are brought here to the city mortuary can be subjected to the rigor and the professionalism of the post-mortem that they require. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much.